How to create a Sudoku solver using Visual Basic 2010. Part 3 The Backtracking Function. Backtracking is a brute force algorithm. No logic is performed, just every combination is tried until a solution is found. Our backtracking function shall be a simple recursive function that basically searches for a non clashing number for each instance. When the instance of the function fails to find a non-clashing number then it returns with a value of false, i.e. it backtracks. Eventually the end is reached with no clashes and it returns with a value of true, invoking all instances of the function to return with a value of true. Come weary traveler, our adventure is almost done. Don't falter now, our prize is almost there to grasp. With bloodshot eyes and a chi brain. Let's make one final push. Create a function called backtrack. The function will receive the indexes of our array and it will return a boolean result. True if the 82nd element of the array has been reached, i.e. the puzzle is solved. And false if an element has cycled through all numbers with a clash every time. From the left hand drop box, select button solve. And from the right hand drop box select the click event. Create a nested loop. Fill the contents of the grip array with the contents of the Sudoku text boxes. Call the backtracking function with the index of the first Sudoku text box. Create a nested loop. Transfer the solved puzzle from the grip array to the Sudoku text boxes. We'll write the function in sudo code first, to make it easier to follow the logic. Create an integer variable named numbers, and set it to 1. Check to see if the grid element contains an empty string. Or not. Create a do loop, convert the numbers variable into a string and put it into the grip element. The loop should continue until the numbers variable reaches 10. On each iteration of the loop, increase the numbers variable by 1. Test 4 clashes with the current value of the numbers variable. Find the next index of the array. If the 82nd element is reached then return from the function with a value of true. Call the backtrack function and return a value of true if the result of the call is true. If the return value is false then we need to decrease the index back to the value for this instance of the function and continue to test the numbers variable. If the loop finishes, then all numbers have been tested and failed. Therefore, we must backtrack. Set the grip element back to an empty string and return from the function with a value of false. Find the next index of the array. If the 82nd element is reached, then return from the function with a value of true. Call the backtrack function, returning true if true, and false if false, i.e. return the result of the function called. Run the program. Every time the solve button is pressed, just one text box at a time is solved. In the button solve clip sub, once the first element of the grip array is transferred to the Sudoku text box, then the cell changed sub is invoked. Once one element with a new value has been transferred from the grip array to the cell array, cell change sub transfers the contents of the Sudoku text boxes into the grip array, 
losing all but the first record that has changed. Create a Boolean variable named backtracking and set it to false. Add a return statement to the beginning of the cell changed sub to be invoked if the backtracking variable is true. Go to the button solve clip sub. Set the backtracking variable to true at the beginning of the sub. And to false at the end of the sub. There are two more small errors that need fixing in the backtracking function. Here, the x variable is checked for the value of 10, and it should be checked for the value of 9. And here, the y variable is set to the value of 0, and it should be set to the value of 8. Run the program. Now the solve button works as it should. An empty grid is not much of a test for our program. Click the clear button and we will enter the more taxing problem. The Finnish mathematician named Arto Inkala produced what he claims is the most difficult Sudoku puzzle in the world. We'll enter it into our Sudoku solver and see how it copes. Click the solve button. It takes around one and a half seconds on this computer. Faster CPUs will solve in faster times. Most Sudoku puzzles entered into our solver will calculate in a few milliseconds. And that's it. All finished. Bye.